Good day, everyone. Welcome back to our show. I pray that God will give us wisdom once again to have a productive learning experience here at Vet Talks with Doc Athena. Good morning. Today we are going to discuss external parasites of goats, part one, lice and ticks. This is a guide for animal raisers, students of veterinary medicine and animal science, and basically anyone who is interested in this topic. So there are many external parasites present in goats, including lice, ticks, cats, mites, fleas, and flies. However, for this lesson, we are going to focus more on lice and ticks. The second two parts will be focusing on other external parasites. Lice and ticks. For lice, there are two different types of lice. We have the sucking and the biting types. So let's focus on lice first. The biting lice, as you can see in the photo, of course, these pictures or photos of the parasites are the microscopic view. You cannot see them with a naked eye like this. You could see them crawling, something like that, on the animal's body. However, if we are going to study the anatomy, then we have to use a microscope in order to study them. Now let's start with biting lice. The biting lice pierce the skin and draw blood. Why is it important to know that they drink blood? It's because it might lead to anemia one way or another. And what are the different biting lice? First, we have the goat biting louse or the bovicola capri on the leftmost side. They look like the same, however, sometimes you have to check the direction of some parts of their bodies and the location of the legs, something like that. So parasitologists use this morphology in order to identify which specific parasite is infesting your animal. On the middle, we have the Angora goat biting louse or the Bovicola crocipes. And we also have the Bovicola limbata on the rightmost part. I would like to thank our reference credits given to Casey Emerson Entomology Museum. Below the picture, or in this slide, we also have the chewing lice. These chewing lice, as it stated in its name, they chew and feed on particles. So what are these particles? Well, it could be dirt or parts of the skin. We have the genus Linognatus for goat sucking louse on the leftmost part. We have the Linognatus stenopsis and we have the African goat louse or the Linognatus africanus on the center. And another hairy one is the sheep foot louse or the Linognatus pedalis on the rightmost side. Again, thank you to Casey Emerson Entomology Museum for these photos of our external parasites of goats. Alright, so after seeing how the lice look like, let's try to profile them. So they are from the order Theraptera, and in the photos presented a while ago, they are wingless and flattened. Therefore, they are considered to be permanent ectoparasites of birds and mammals, which spend their entire lives on the host. Once the bird or mammal has this infestation, then the lice stay forever. <laughs> okay, so they are permanent ectoparasites. Now, what is nymph? Nymph is an immature and look very similar to adults. They look like adults, however, they haven't reached their adult stage yet. It's like maybe adolescence in humans, so they cannot reproduce yet. Both the immature and adult stages suck the blood or feed on the skin. 
So even if they're still young, their traditional source is already the same with the adult. They cause tuberculosis, which is a chronic dermatitis characterized by constant irritation, itching, rubbing, and biting of the hair. Okay, so you might observe this in your animals when they have lice. And what are the other signs that you might observe? Well, there are dull or matted coat. There could also be excessive scratching and grooming. And there are raw areas of the skin or hair loss. Sometimes we call this as a hot spot. And there's also weight loss, milk production, listlessness, and of course, anemia. When you submit a blood sample to the lab, one of the findings might be anemia because as we have mentioned for the genus uh, Bobicola or the biting louse, they suck blood. And how do the animals get this one? Well, first of all, it's contact. We mentioned that the animal is a permanent parasite because they spend their entire life on the animal. However, of course, there could be a transmission if there is direct contact between animals because um, they could they could not fly since they are wingless. However, they could crawl because they have legs. That's how the animals get infested. Or they could do foresty. Wow. So what is foresty? Since these animals are wingless, they try to cling to winged animals such as flies so that they could travel. So they use another winged parasite in order for them to transfer or to move from one place to another. And that is called foresty. That is for lice. Just a short break, Fox. Did you learn something so far? If yes, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, clarifications, or anything related to this lecture video, please comment it below. Are you enjoying this free lecture? If yes, please consider subscribing in our YouTube channel and follow us on Doc Athena Facebook page because through the page, we could communicate better. I do my best to reply to all your comments here in YouTube, but if you want a better communication, then please do follow our Facebook page so that we can have a better form of communication. That's for a short break. Now let's go back to work. Now let's talk about ticks. Ticks harm their hosts by injuries caused by bites, blood loss, and transmission of disease pathogens. This transmission of disease pathogens happens when there is blood meal or suck blood which carries a blood parasite and transmit it to another animal. Example would be early kiosis. Well, ticks can be classified in three groups, and that depends on the number of hosts that is needed in order to finish their life cycle. So it could be a one-host tick, two-host tick, or three-host tick. The ticks present in goats are three-host tick. That's why they are very difficult to control. However, ticks are not common in goats, but there are reports, and these include American dog tick or the Dermacentor variabilis, the Gulf Coast tick or Amblyoma maculatum, and Lone Star tick or Amblyoma americanum. Now, let's move to the next slide, which show us the different tick morphologies. Unlike the lice, which we previously discussed, Ticks are way much bigger and you don't need a microscope in order to determine if your animal is infested with ticks. But we still need microscope in order to study the details or the morphology of the ticks that are present in the animal. Before we discuss the different ticks that were reported on goats, I would like to thank first our reference, R. Grantham from Oklahoma State University. Let's discuss first the American dog tick or Dermacentor variabilis. The female on the left has this big white marking that is covering almost 40% of the dorsal part of its body. 
Whereas for the male on the left, it seems to have a scattered spots of black and some white parts covering the middle to the lower part of its back or dorsal part of its body. Next is the Gulf Coast tick or Amblyoma maculatum. On the left is the female, which shows white marking also, maybe 30% of its dorsal part. And for the male, on the right, seems to have a spider-like markings on its back or the dorsal part of the tick. Lastly, we have the Lone Star Tick or Amblyoma Americanum. And the female on the left seems to have this distinct white marking on the middle of its back or dorsal part. Whereas the male seems to have these four markings on the lower part of its back or dorsal part of its body. Those are the different ticks that were reported to be present on goats. Now, for our references, I would like to thank Kaufman, Kohler, and Butler from the Extension of University of Florida, as well as Justin Tully from Oklahoma State University of their Cooperative Extension. We would like to thank them for these illustrations of the different lies and ticks that were reported in goats. So that's all, folks. For summary, again, the most common external parasites of goats include lice, ticks, mice, kids, fleas, and flies. Please do watch as well the part two and three of our external parasites of goats for the discussion of the other parasites. Pediculosis is a chronic dermatitis characterized by constant irritation, itching, rubbing, and biting of the hair. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for listening to our Vet Talks with Doc Athena. I hope to see you again. Please take care, everyone. God bless us all. Bye! Thank you for being with us in this episode of Vet Talks with Doc Athena. For those who have not yet subscribed our YouTube channel, please do so. Did you learn something from this lecture? If yes, please hit the like button. If you want to be a part of our social media community and always updated of our new posts or to talk to me directly, you may do so by following our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Again, thank you very much. Please keep safe everyone. God bless us all and I hope to see you again in our next lecture. This is Doc Athena, your country vet.